This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we're back, baby. Sebastian Maniscalco, what's going on, bro? Weekend edition, typically don't get together on a Saturday or a Sunday, but uh, firing up the good old podcast yeah. on a Saturday afternoon. On perfect, bro. I literally, on, you, sorry, yeah, go ahead. you texted me about doing the show, and I was supposed to go to 4 o'clock mass, and you're like, let's start at 4. I came in, I gave Jack, I'm like, I can't go to church, I got a cast, beautiful. <laughs> she goes, well, lucky you. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. it, man. You got to get out of school card. Um, yeah. Let's hop into it, man. Let's get right into it. Uh, Pete and I were together uh, face-to-face on, when was that? Thursday? Thursday? Wednesday. Last Wednesday. Wednesday night. Yeah. Pete and I got together. Uh, we did a podcast from a undisclosed location, right? Yeah, that we can't say in New York. It's in New York, right? Underground. Uh, and then we went out for a bite. Yes, excuse me. Drop my pen, shit. So went out for a bite, man. So we go to Milos, one of my favorite restaurants in the world. On 55th over there. And um, funny, I got the guy's card the night before. Anytime I go, I generally go with Mazzilli's and they make the reservation. Yeah. But this is the first time I got his card, right? And funny, I just like called. And it's, it's literally impossible to get a reservation there. Uh, but I just called him. He didn't pick up. And then I walked in. Yeah. And we got... And we got a table. Unheard of, bro. Unheard well, of. I, I know that place. I know of it. And I had a feeling it was one of those top, top places that is hard to get in. And there was a line. And I knew when we got in the town car, the uh, Tahoe driver guy that you had, which I got to tell you something about that, bro. I'll get to that. My gosh. But anyway, um, I really, I got to say, I had absolute confidence. D- didn't even question we'd get in based on what you, wh- who you are and what you've been doing. I really, I'm, I, in my head, I was like, if he, if he doesn't get in, who does? <laughs> the, the guy, he just sold out, to, out all four arenas in the area. So that was uh, nice well, to see. Yeah. Listen, you got to understand something, though. I'm coming from, you know, there's certain per- people in whatever walk of life you come from and whatever success you have, you know, like, for example, John Travolta has been in the entertainment business uh, for, what, 55 years? So he has 55 years of getting used to, you know, getting in. I don't have that many years behind me, bro. Like, there's no track. I got no track record. (laughs) Right, right, right. Right? So he was like, it could be a, I could get in. I can't, it's, I'm still on the fence right now of, you know, right. what I can and cannot do in regards to getting a reservation. Shit. Well, I, I think, I think though, once the movie comes out with you and Bobby D, that is like going to be eyes wide open sort of a thing. Because uh, I think once that movie comes out, you can go to concerts without a ticket. <laughs> That's that, you know, just show up. <laughs> In the back, knock on the door, security opens it up, about to say, who the fuck is not? Oh, shit, come on in! No bracelet, guy. Backstage, they don't even put the bracelet on. (laughs) That's the highest level. Like, do you think when Mick Jagger goes to see something and he's backstage, they're like, Mick, we just got to put this all-access bracelet on your wrist. He's like, this face is all-access. So, after the movie pops... But, yeah, I was happy to see, bro, you are sliding right into movie star status from the car that took us to the way you handled yourself right up there. Uh, You got it all down, man. I got to tell you, though, you want to talk about access and where I am in my career? Yeah. I went to go to catering at one of the venues, right? 
you know, there's like a, a catering hall where you, you know, you get dinner. Right. right? Wait, so, your show? Yeah, at my show. Okay, right. right. It's, it's, my, it's my show. I believe we were in, I want to say, New Jersey. All right. And I went in, and there's a security guard outside the catering, and he goes, you got your your lanyard, right? Now, the, the lanyard has, I'm on the lanyard, right? <laughs> Picture of you, right, right. And I thought he was kidding. He goes, and I point at the lanyard, which is on the door. Like, it, he's got a piece of paper with, the, this lanyard gets you this, this lanyard gets you that. You know, like, I go, what, not enough to be on the lanyard? You know? Oh, goes, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he goes, no, do you have it? Now, he's not putting together that I'm the same guy on the lanyard right. around his neck. Even after now, the he, subtle joke right there, yes. Yeah, didn't even, didn't even put the two and two together. Right. Then I'm like laughing, right? I'm like, yeah, you know, like, I still think he's joking. He goes, no, no, I need the lanyard. You know, it's security reasons. You know, like I, I thought it was like sarcasm. And I go, yeah, you know, I'm really going to do something, you know. And I walk in, you know. Yeah. And then it dawns on him. And then he comes back with, uh, the picture don't do you justice. You know, he, he did that whole thing, right? <laughs> but. Now you wonder why I'm worried about getting into Milos. I can't even get into my own cafeteria. <laughs> oh, man. You would think, man, you would think the only job is to know the face of the guy. That's the whole reason any of us are here. I got to make sure this is recording. Holy shit, I'm getting nervous now. All right, oh. all right yeah. <laughs> oh, that's oh, funny, God. dude. But so, um, will we... More so me with my shirt, but even with your orange sweater, <clears throat> were we un underdressed? And do you feel being, not me, but you like being a celebrity that you're allowed to be underdressed? Well, that place in general, I think you get a lot of like business meetings there and what have you. It's not one of these places where like... Guys like us are gonna come and knock down some some fish. I think it's more business oriented. That's why you see a lot of suit and tie there. Yeah. But I didn't feel underdressed. And even though I mean, you had a uh, basically a thermal undershirt on that you would wear like underneath your ski right. your ski outfit. Right. That's right. I know, but I look cool, bro. I look cool. I felt like what? they were looking over thinking I was like some indie singer songwriter that you were hanging out with that they didn't know. I mean I looked very cool. And when the one guy came up and said uh, big fan to you, I'm like in my head going, God, you don't watch the cast? Come on, I'm right here, baby. <laughs> I was over one person Person would come up and go, what the fuck to do you? Holy shit. Uh, it was a fun yeah. time, though, man. Thanks for the uh, food and the drinks and uh, it, turning bro, me on bro, to... Yeah, go ahead. You're skipping over. Oh, I know, you're, I know. You're, you're already at the end of the meal. I'm walking the... I'm walking the listener through the experience, man. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm going too and, fast. And 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 you you goddamn well know that we got to dissect the meal and, and points in the service... Uh, for the cast listeners, I want to ask you this because during what was going on, I didn't really get your take either way on this. Uh -huh. But since I've been there so many times, I just told you I'm going to take the lead on ordering, right? right? Yeah. Now, now, how'd you feel about that? Were you like craving like a lamb chop and then you're like, oh, well, he's going to order? Like, wh where was your head on the... Mm -hmm. On me taking the baton on that. Uh, well, we discussed it ahead of time where I said, I don't like lamb. I'm a brother-in-law yeah. is Greek, and so I don't know much about it. And you were saying, nah, I know. So I figured you're going to walk me through a nice journey through some Greek food. Uh, from the minute we left, bro, you're a major alpha male. You're like, want to go to Milo's? So in my head, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to get a little stone, lean back here and let him take care of everything. I'll be like, uh, I'm the wife. <laughs> you know? I mean, even when you bought the... I'm not, I mean, we're going to pull out a 20 and add it to whatever you're doing. It's like, uh, just 
that's, you know, so I was totally, at, the only thing that bothered me on a personal level <laughs> w- w- was that I had that goddamn bag with the camera in it from doing the cast and you, had, oh, yeah, and yeah. you had nothing. Having a bag on you walking into a restaurant like that is so lame. I got a little bag over my shirt. And then when he said, our oh, table's ready, I got to scoop up my bag. It's not cool. Yeah, it's yeah, not a good yeah. thing, guy. And I, I got to agree, bro. I, I feel like you walk into a restaurant like that and you got luggage on you. Oh, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Shit. Fucking not even a Louis Vuitton. It's like a ten dollar Walmart fucking computer bag, and I used it for a camera, so there was a bulge in the middle of it. And bro, you didn't even see. I didn't. This was so last minute bringing the camera. I didn't have nothing to wrap it in. I wrapped it in a dish towel that you dry dishes in. <laughs> so I'm in Milos with a camera wrapped in a dirty dish towel. Not everyone else has got you know Gucci bags if they do have one. <laughs> Shit. You don't even want anything in your pockets when you're going to a restaurant at that level. Bro, I agree, man. I feel like sometimes I shouldn't even have a wallet on me because it just, <sighs> it's too, the wallet, I never liked the wallet. On no the, bumps, right? No, no bumps, man. No, Clean. <laughs> If a blind person ran their hand down my body, I'd want them to think it was the wall. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, guys, is that the wall? No, that's my leg down to my... <laughs> no bumps. No bumps. I hear you. You ever wear a nice coat and you got something like a bolt, like a bolt, so just like you could tell there's something in the left pocket. It's killing the whole oh, look. Bro. I got to tell you, the, the the worst part of that, which you just mentioned, yeah. is wearing a winter jacket, and you got to put the gloves in the pocket. Oh, right? oh God. Oh. Talk about bumps, bro. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I don't like... I even try to do sometimes the gloves, winter gloves, I stuff them in the back pocket of my pants like a workman look. Ooh. But I've had a few times, and this is embarrassing too. You ever have this? I dropped a glove. Whenever you drop clothing and a stranger tells you you dropped a piece of clothing <laughs> and you got to turn around and pick that shit up as you say thank you. Oh, God. Picking up my dirty glove. Thank you. I would have one when I got... Oh, God. You didn't drop your shit. Who drops this shit? Oh, oh, bro. I'm telling you, when you drop your stuff and somebody else tells you, I get mad. I didn't <laughs> hear it hit the ground, bro. What about, what about when you do go to pick it up and they say you dropped it, but you already saw it and you're like, hey, I, I, I got it. I got it. I don't need you. All right. I think you're saving the day there. I got it. Thank you. I got it. Oh, yeah. oh I, shit! I, I'm gonna I'm gonna reverse it on you though, man. Yeah. yeah. How good does it make you feel when you see somebody drop something and you tell them, "Excuse me, you dropped your scarf." I feel like, <sighs> bro, I feel like a band should come out <laughs> playing. Bro. It's like it's as if you practically just bought them a scarf. That's <laughs> really it's like a gift. It does. Well, uh, it does feel good, bro. You're right. It just puts a hop oh. in your step, man. Oh, my God. So I'm with you. I like a smooth look, and I got the bag, so that already made me, you know, physically less cool than you, even though you were wearing your sneakers were a little <laughs> suspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what Pete's referring to is I had an orange sweater, and then I had these uh, sneakers that were orange and white. It kind of... It kind of like matched the sweater. Of course, you know Pete saw me, and uh, you know I look wow. like a, I look like a tangerine walking into Milo's. Well, right? no, you look like uh, you know, like I, I literally for a second I thought when I first saw you that you were a twenty year old, and I didn't see the skateboard at your side. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, that's, it begs the question because you do the pant tucked into the sneaker. What is the age level where that's... I, the, I the, didn't do it. That, there was no talking. What happened it, was the the, 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 the 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 gene at the bottom is a little snug, so it crept up and then just made its way into the sneaker. Oh, pardon me. You didn't tuck it. It tucked itself. But my point is... <laughs> oh, so it's... So if someone did a tuck, a manual tuck, and you could say, you could like, that's tacky. But if it does yeah. a delicate slide on its own. Oh, yeah. Totally different, bro. I kind of know because, like, when you, when, you, when you drop a shirt, that's cool. When you straighten a shirt, that's not cool. So I, I hear that. But um, nevertheless, 
You think there's like a high top sneaker um, age limit? Maybe? Nah, like, nah bro. No, if you, if no. You, if you if you got a designer sneaker on, <laughs> it, there's there's no age requirement. I I, I got. I mean, like I'm not. Uh, 48, 58, 60 in sneakers, all fully gray. Yeah. You're hanging on. You're hanging on, right? All right. 40, all right. 48, black and white, you're still in the game, bro. Okay, but 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 I get that even when you're older, you don't have to, you can't not ever have a sneaker. Get some comfortable. You that's when you usually go more of a deck sneaker when you're an older man, more of a casual sneaker. You yeah. know, your your sneaker is like if if it wasn't on your foot, uh, like like if you took it off at a locker at an amusement park or something, I would think it's a high school kid sneaker when I went over yeah. to the lockers, right? Yeah. So ba- based on the coloring, but if you if you if you were piped into the fashion game, you would know <laughs> the sneaker fashion game. It's a it's a nice <laughs> yeah, sneaker, a, like a collector a, sort of thing. Yeah, not collectors, but it's it's a. It's a it's a nice it's a nice uh, pair of scarps. So yeah, but you perform in those anyway, so you got an excuse, man. Yeah, right. It, it wasn't a yeah. Well, I I don't perform in that particular sneaker, but it was it was a look, definitely a look. But what right. what I want to get into? Yeah, okay. And, and, and we we brushed upon this during the meal. Oh. Now we had a. a a Greek salad and what they call a Milos Tower over there, which is thinly fried zucchini dipped in like a tzatziki sauce. Which Phenomenal. Is it was so f- good. All the food you had was, I really used to not say, I would say I'm not really into Greek food, but what, what I had at Milos was just melt in your mouth fantastic. Oh, so yeah, it, everything's fresh. So they, they remove the plates. And then I noticed that, that Pete, pops a, a Nicorette gum in his mouth, which I found right. the timing of that was a little off due to the fact that there was still food to come, right? Mm-hmm. So, which I was... Now, let me stop here. Did you think we were done? I did, because when we went there... You you made it sound like uh, you want to get you you go want to get something to eat and then we go over to Milos and we sat down. So I thought, uh, and I think I even said I'm like, well, I'm not really hungry for a whole meal, but yeah, I'll go over there and try some stuff. So when that came out, it was like two things. It was light. It was late at night, uh, and we had some drinks. So I was like, all right, a little couple tapas here. We're gonna eat that and then have our drinks. And so I popped the gum like it's an after dinner mint. Okay, or well, a cigarette. I, 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 I would. I was shocked because you were there when I ordered, right? Like I mm. ordered, and you you heard what I ordered, and not really. You, you got... <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for famous people, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm in a five star restaurant. I'm doing a buzz around. If anyone from a Tucker Carlson to a New York Nick, who's in here? Who's in here? <laughs> Am I sitting with the only famous guy in here? What the fuck? <laughs> so I told you, I was the wife. I wasn't even listening to what you were ordering. I figured you'd tell right, me what right. it was before I ate it, you know? All right. So then then I was like, okay, that's why there was a disconnect there. So now the, now the, the meal comes. All right. And I look at you. Right. And a, and a sense of panic comes over your face, right? <laughs> like, Folks, I know everyone listening at home, sometimes we just have you looking in, but I have to look at you directly and say, eating with this man is the most stressful <laughs> and enjoyable thing you can do at once. It's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. It, 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 no, I mean, it, it, it's not that I was even looking for it. it looking it for like, it? You, you just said you were shocked. I was shocked at the at the react when the food came to the table. It, right. it, your face looked as if a horse's head was being delivered. It was like right. what, you know, it, 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 was, right. it was a lot. It was a lot of like what was what's going on here, right? And, and guys, I, I, and and this wasn't a discreet thing. You might have thought it was, but my God. <laughs> Pete, Pete takes his gum and he does does one of these like hand hand motions over his mouth and as he's doing it in my head I'm going oh no oh god where's he gonna put this oh my god you are 
Because <laughs> this was either an under the table job or I don't know what it was, but right, right, the, gu right. the gum comes out and he lays it on his cell phone, guys. Now, Oh. The, the the gum is on the cell phone, and then what he does is he takes the linen napkin and put, puts it over the cell phone. Oh my! Oh god. my now, god, bro! <laughs> can I interject for a second? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right, everything Sebastian just said is one hundred percent true. But now let's take it from the other person's perspective, okay? Didn't realize more food was coming. I was shocked, uh, but also happily, okay, here we go. We're going to actually eat. Now, I did have my gum. Now, the problem is living where I live, um, I 99.9% .9 of the time eat at restaurants with paper napkins. Yeah, so yeah. When, my, when I'm done with my gum, I got something to do. So I did a look around, and there was nowhere to go with the gum. And I don't do stick it under the table or anything like that. I got too much respect for the restaurant staff at any restaurant. Wouldn't want anyone to have to clean up my gum. So, uh, and I gotta say, this stick of red is not cheap. And I had just <laughs> popped that one in, so it had a lot of nicotine left in it. So I'm like, where can I put this puppy and have it after this fish? Uh, I'm like, I'll put it on my phone. And then I'm like, oh wait, if he sees it, he's gonna have a heart attack. So let me delicately hovered a linen napkin over the gum so he doesn't see it. It was like a canopy, so if it rained, the gum wouldn't get wet, but it wasn't touching the gum. Uh, it was all thought out, bro. All thought out. Uh, and then uh, I mentioned a little later on, after we had a couple of drinks, if you had noticed that you said you did, we I got it, here we go. I, you go, I saw you put it on the phone. I go, that's why I put the linen over it so you wouldn't see it. I knew it. Bro, it's not that fun with you sometimes. It's so stressful. I felt like I felt like I'm a little rusty, fine dine. My manners, I felt they were a little <laughs> Viking esque at times, man. Oh, bro, bro, I, I bro, I mean, I, I, when I saw that, I'm like, oh man, he's he's been living in Fredonia too long, right? Oh, like, <laughs> you, you, no one else saw that move. That was a subtle move. You think anyone at any other table? Uh oh, what happened? Uh, no, that's all right. That's all right. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Do you think it, anyone at sitting at any other table saw that? Like, you think they it, went, did you see that guy sitting with Sebastian? He just put his fucking gum on his phone. If I was sitting at another table, I would have saw that. Well, I, I mean, I, like, <laughs> it, it, bro, I'm just saying. I would have literally been it, 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 doing, getting a fork full of fish. Yeah. And I, 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 I would have looked up and I go, what the <laughs> That's such <laughs> bullshit. That means you see everything going on at the whole restaurant whenever you eat, you liar. I mean, I'm not saying on. everything. I'm just saying. A move like that, I think. I think it's like, hey, you take, you sneeze or whatever, you whatever, you blow your nose, whatever you're doing. Right, right. But when 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 you did this, and then, listen, I, bro, was, was, you know, was, I think the uh, oh, bro, was, the, the chef, the chef might have saw it from the, oh. from, <laughs> from the kitchen. I think he stopped making fish and go. Did you see what happened at table fifty one? Guy just took uh, out his gum and laid it on his iPhone. They're looking out going, if he was sitting with anybody but Sebastian, we'd have sent them out the back door by now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, I think God. you're being a little harsh on me, but now no, I know no, I got to I mean, bring a little paper napkin next time I'm going to five-star dine, huh? <laughs> Wait till I tell you what happened with my gum the next night. It's even more embarrassing. <laughs> So uh, what were you going to say about the, the driver early on in the story? You said, oh, I'll get to the driver. Uh, cause that well, well it's, a, it's a whole piece, so I guess I'll bring it up after we eat dinner, after we're done with the dinner, if we're done. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, oh. Yeah, oh. that was okay. pretty much the dinner. Yeah. Uh, well, it was fantastic. And, I, and by the way, uh, that fish was just so good, man. Yeah, and sweet. even like I'm eating the fish and there's little capers. I, I got to be honest with you. I knew they were capers. But I know you're a food guy, so I'm trying to do... I go, these are capers, right? And you just go, yeah. What the fuck, guy? You're supposed to tell me why they taste so good and walk me through it a little. And I didn't... I felt that you were not enjoying my dining skills. And then, oh, God, when I when I used my fork accidentally on the baklava, holy shit, you would have think I just, you know, laid in your bed naked, guy. <laughs> Well, there was baklava dropped off, right, to the table. And, you know, when you're sharing a dessert, 
you know, it, whether it be, you know, a cake or, or what have you, you take your knife and you cut yourself a slice and you put it on, put it on your, your thing. Pete goes in fork first, right? Well, and he first. takes it, takes it. And then he goes back again after the fork has been in his mouth. Think, oh, that's it. The, destroyed the dessert. Can't go back in. <laughs> oh, I, 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 you're right. I used the fork when I knew the fork was fresh. So I knew I had one free fork cut. <laughs> and then I saw you using your knife. And I used my knife once. Then I grabbed it with my fork and ate it. And then I accidentally forgot. And I went in with the fork. And as soon as the fork hit the baklava, I said to you, Oh, God, I suppose you're not touching that side. You're like, the whole thing's shot. It's shot, guy. It's shot. You literally put your hands up <coughs> like I just broke a window or something. Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> and baklava, by the way, there's no way to eat that shit without looking like there was a homicide at the table. There's fucking crumbs and shit everywhere. What the fuck? Make a more uh, <laughs> less messy dessert, you yeah, freak. Yeah, no, that's all. Delicious. That's all over. The, Delicious. It's all over. The, it's all over the map. That it was like it was like a like a, I don't know what it was. The brittle, very brittle. So, now, um, yeah, your driver. Now this is yeah. this is fascinating. I had some drinks last night with some really close friends and Jackie, and I told them the story. And my analogy and comparison, they were crying, laughing. Now. A while back, we had had a a long discussion about Kobe Bryant and unfortunately how sometimes perhaps people try to do more than they they say. They don't want to say no to a celebrity. So in a certain way, the guy tried to fly when maybe he shouldn't, right? On a gazillionth lesser scale, obviously, God rest the great Kobe. Your driver is a very nice guy, right? Very nice. Introduce himself, sweetheart of a guy. So we're driving. Uh, and he, you're gonna, your guy's gonna give me a lift to the train station. And I was telling you when I first took the train into into New York City, the New Jersey Transit. You cool? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's, I get on the train, and I look around. And everyone's got masks, and I'm like, what the? And then I see a sign that says you have to have a mask. Now the train took off. Conductor comes over. He's like, where's your mask? And I'm like, hey. I, I haven't worn a mask in a month. I don't even live around here. I don't even know what, I, this is like, what's going on here, man? Do you have yeah, yeah. one? And he's like, I, I don't have one. <clears throat> and he clicks my ticket and storms off, you know? And uh, so I was like, all right, I had a transfer. And on the next train, that guy gave me a little bit of a hard time. So I'm telling you in the car, I'm like, man, I forgot. I got a mask to go home. So you go to your driver. Do you have a mask? And he goes, sure. Yeah, sure. I got a mask. And he starts looking for a mask. And it wasn't a quick thing. I thought maybe he'd open up a pack of them and just hand me one. He's fishing around a little bit, blah, blah, blah. Then he finally finds a mask and hands me a nice, fresh black mask. I get on the train, and everybody's been drinking, so not everybody's wearing their mask, so I try to get away with it. And then I get on the train, the conductor's like, coming around, you have to have your mask on. I'm like, shit. I pull out that mask, I put it on, bro. It smelled like Doritos. It was used, guy. He gave me a used man. I almost puked. I took it off and threw it on the ground. And my mouth area smelled like Doritos the rest of the train ride. A passenger ate Doritos and had that mask oh. on. And he put it back in because oh he wanted to God. please you so bad. He gave me <laughs> a fucking Dorito mask, guy. It was disgusting. I would have rather if he just gave me COVID. Just give me COVID. I'll take that for the ride. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you think, based on the mask, as far as it, and when you get a fresh mask, it's like straight, right? Mm-hmm. As soon as you get like a used mask, it's bent out. You could tell like there's a face been in there, right? Well, you can make it. A lot of times I can take a used mask if it hasn't been worn too long, per, let's say 30 minute ride to JFK long, I could re flatten that mask and slide it back in the bag. Which okay. is what uh, was done. Uh, 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 wait, did you get the did you get the mask <laughs> in a in a bag or was it? Oh, loose? I got a single hand. It was handed to me, so it wasn't in any plastic or anything. Uh, okay, okay. I'm not I'm not sticking up for the driver whatsoever. However, mm-hmm. I'm gonna look at another possibility. You should look at another driver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding, man. <laughs> Do what, what? you think? Do you think? Maybe he had a Dorito bag in the council, and maybe a couple fell out as he was digging in and hit the mask, therefore giving it a 
Dorito stench or a bag of Doritos was left in the council with the thing shut and everything in there now smells like Dorito. I mean, I, I, I got to say, I held this thing up in my hand. Didn't smell Dorito. I put it on. Did that. It's somebody was eating Doritos and got it embedded into the fabric. I, that's what happened. It, and I'm not kidding. When people exaggerate, I, I almost threw up for a second because I really felt it's like smelling another man's fart. It's just so <laughs> disgusting that you can't even breathe, man. Oh, my God. <sighs> so <laughs> I, I risked the fine and threw it on the ground, man. Yeah. And that's what that's. I don't know if there's a term for that, but that's what was going on. If you were just Joe Schmo, he would have said, I'm sorry, I don't have an extra mask. Oh, my God, so, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh God! Let me uh, quick walk you through the, the next night. I just want to tell you the gum situation. I went out to dinner with um, Rappaport and the producer for the TV show we're writing, and the other writer. We went to Smith and Malinsky, and I even made a mental note to myself: I don't want to have that same situation with the gum. And then I do nothing about it. So now I'm sitting in Smith and Malinsky, and. Uh, I got Rappaport to the right, so like, and it's a fourth terrible thing. I don't have like, with you, it was only one guy I had to try not to see my gum thing. Now I got three guys around me. So I take my gum and I put it under my dish because I don't know what else to do with it. Bro, we get to talking and hanging out and blah, blah, blah. The waiter comes, he takes all the dishes away. You just see one piece of fucking gum sitting on the linen table. <laughs> Oh, shit. I go out and grab that shit. Oh, oh gosh, man. So, and the other thing I wanted to only bring up about that meeting was, uh, bro, I, I learned something age-wise here moving forward. I'm, I'm adapting as I go. The other writer, we had this whole outline, and I go, oh, my, my mom's, I can't print it. He goes, no problem. I'll print two copies and bring them. So he hands me a, a copy, and it's like, it's like seven episodes, so it's like all this outline. We're, we're going over with them while we're eating steak and drinking all this stuff. So the the other guy's going for a while, like doing the outline. And when he's telling it, I know how it goes when he's saying it, and I'm interjecting. And we're not selling anything. This thing's getting made, so it's just it's it's more casual. It's not like really intense, but nevertheless, at some point, the other guy's name is Pete. He goes uh, um, to me. He goes, Pete, I'm just gonna eat my steak here. Can you take over from it. I'm like, yeah, no problem, bro. I couldn't read the fucking type without my readers. Oh. And here's the thing. Number one, I didn't bring my readers. And number two, if I did bring my readers, you think I put the beginning of the conversation, Rappaport was asking me about stand up and we're talking about comedy and stuff. Now I'm going to pop on a pop granny <laughs> readers. So now I know I got to print all my shit double big when I have meetings now. Ah, well. The fact that you're still still calling them readers is what do you old. call them? It's glasses. I put well, my glasses on readers. What, what, what are you ninety? No, no, I wear contacts. I only need them to see print up close. I can't see, right? What do you see? Don't you call those readers? Contacts. I wear contacts. Okay. I have contacts in my eyes right now. But if I had small okay. print in front of me, yeah, yeah, I you can't. Your so I got yeah, to put my readers on. They call readers because I only need them to read. I don't know what you're talking about, guy. Glasses. Readers. They're glasses, but they're readers. They're a type of glass. Bro. What? Oh, man, we're not. <laughs> this is, we're not connecting today. If we were a couple, I'd be like, you watch TV upstairs, I'll watch that. Bro, bro, bro. I don't care if you're nearsighted, farsighted, you can't read. Right. Glasses are glasses. It covers... It covers all that, bro. Right, but if you're at a restaurant and you can't read the menu and you go, uh, oh, I need my glasses. Um, yeah. But if you're already wearing contact lenses, I I, I don't know. I just feel I, I want them to understand. I only need these to read the menu. I'm not like Magoo, all right? I'm not that old yet, so. Yeah, I know, but like. If, all right. All right. I'll say you, glasses. I'll try it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know if readers. I, I've never really heard that term. I've, I mean, I've heard it, but not like when people are going, "My God, I can't see anything. I need my glasses." You know, like that's that's, that's just what, like a standard. Right, but you had to have been out to dinner with like anyone from your father-in-law to your own dad, where they're like, "Ah, oh, I forgot my readers. I can't even see what's." Okay. On well, that's what I'm saying. People of that ilk, that age, maybe are using that 
term. Oh, oh, so you're, that term is outdated for a certain yeah, age. Yeah, it's an oh, old term. Oh, the guy walking around in Keds. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. All right, all right. Oh, so now we're all shit. saying glasses. Good to know, bro. I don't yeah. want to be dated. I don't want to be dated. Yeah, bro. I, I, I think uh, have the listeners chime in on that uh, online and let me know and let Pete know if 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 readers are uh, a thing of the past or is this something that people are uh, are saying if they can't read a book. Uh, I don't know. So. Um, so yeah, I just got back last night, man. 16, 17 days out on the road. Long, long time. Went to St. Augustine. Yeah. Florida. It's the oldest city in the country. And there's a lot to do there. I mean, there's like a there's like a cemetery that's supposed to be haunted. There's an old like fort where, you know, and I don't know what the hell it was there for, but it's like a, it's like an old brick fort. So that was a uh, city before we were even America. Is that the deal? It's supposed to be the oldest city in America. I I don't right. exactly know right. where this falls as far as right. before right. America, after America. But um, <clears throat> <laughs> they got zip line over alligators, right? Like there's alligator pit and you zip line over them. Right? What? Yeah, that seems a little unnecessary, man. Well, that's what I said. It's like, you know, things like that, zip line over alligators. I never want to put myself in a situation where, you know, when they're putting the harness in, right? Yeah. And they go, you know, and, and you ask them, hey, anything ever happened? And they go, it's one out of a million. Anytime I hear one out of whatever, right? Yeah. I feel like I'm going to be the one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? They did say one. So yeah. why not? It could be you. It could be you. I want to know like where we are on how many how many people have done this? Are we at the million mark yet? You know, like when you say one out of a million, are we at nine hundred and sixty-two thousand? Where are we? <laughs> That's great. Well, the good news is only one in a million died. The bad news is I've strapped up 999,000 <laughs> people. Enjoy your ride. <laughs> By the way, if this thing you were on, is it high enough that if it broke, you would, you would already die from the fall? Well, I asked the woman. I go, is there netting? She goes, no, you're strapped to a harness. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. You got to have another layer of a barrier between you because you're on a harness. Whatever happens, the the line could break, the harness could unclip, and next thing you know, uh -huh. you're in a you're in a uh, you know seven alligators mouth. Forget it. And, and by the way, right, right. You want to talk about? You want to talk about uh, frightening? There's a podcast, and I typically don't re recommend podcasts because, you know, I don't listen to a lot of them, but I got recommended on this one, Apple Podcast. There is a podcast called Wild Things, and it's the story of Siegfried and Roy. Now, I don't know if you ever saw Siegfried and Roy in Las Vegas. For oh, those Siegfried of you, Roy. Yes, I have. Yeah. I have, actually. Oh, you have? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, basically, magicians that were at the Mirage Hotel for, I don't know, 16 years, they basically sold out every show they ever did there. On the podcast, they said, uh, you know, six shows a week for 16 years sold out every night. 90 bucks a ticket, 1,500 seats in the theater. And they basically were magicians that dealt with live animals, uh, particularly white tigers. And for those of you who don't know, Roy, one of the guys, got basically <clears throat> eaten by a tiger on stage. He, you know, the guy went for the tiger went for his throat, and he basically ended his career. You know, he he actually passed away. I think twenty twenty from he was, COVID. It was protecting me. Right? Yeah, yeah, he was protecting me. Ah, That's yeah. what they said. But this thing goes into the whole thing. The whole thing about the Tigers and how they started. Excellent podcast. I think it's nine episodes. Didn't they meet on but, a cruise ship? Yeah, met on a cruise ship uh, in Germany. And basically, you know, worked together for, for 40 years. 
Now, the reason I bring that up is because I went to the show, as did you, and uh, at the time, I'm like, oh, this is unbelievable. The tiger's in the box. There's a tiger on stage, and he's got it on a leash. There's no barrier between the audience and the tiger. So if this tiger one night (coughs) decides (coughs) when he's in the box the fuck am I doing in here and right. wants to run out of the theater? He can, right? Do you got you you got a good point. I kind of when I watched it assume maybe they had like guys with uh, tranquilizers off to the <laughs> side. If the tigers go past the red line, it's nappy nap. Everybody gets a refund. We all go home while well, there's a laying tiger there. Yeah, no, bro, you're yeah. right. I didn't even think about. It. But they have such command of the tigers. It's like going to someone's house where they say their pit bull's a, a sweetheart, and you believe it by the by the way they're petting it, and you're like, oh, okay, I guess it's one of those. I know, no, bro, we're we're dealing with like exotic animals. A- an animal is an animal. A-, a wild tiger is a wild tiger. I don't care how much you know it or whatnot. And I'm sorry, walking around a six hundred foot, a six hundred pound tiger with a with a chain leash. What are you going to do if this thing decides to lunge at the audience? Pull it back? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point. But you have to admit, when you saw it, it looked like it was a love fest between them and the Tigers. You know, our guards were all down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, And and they go into the podcast and they talk about, like, it could have been someone from the audience that set the Tiger off purposely. Uh, because, you know, they were under a lot of scrutiny for using these wild tigers because, you know, you know, PETA and whatnot, just, you know, this is not right and whatnot. And sometimes they say these animal activists will go to a show to set the animal off to show that animals should not be in captivity like this. So they were saying that tigers react different to, like, perfumes, so one of the theories where someone like sprayed some perfume on stage, Tiger got a whiff of it and you know he went nuts, right? right so right. it's fascinating. You got to listen to the podcast. But my parents took me to this thing when I was like 12. And you know, it's like we went there and the Tiger comes out, no one said, "Is this safe?" You know like Right, right, you know? Thank God your mom didn't do a little pet perfume dab of her own halfway through the show. Perfume? You know? Me and my dad came in with, with tons of it on. I mean, uh-huh. if, if the... <laughs> yeah, right, you two Italians, forget it. <laughs> if the tiger didn't react to our cologne, then we proved that theory wrong. <laughs> that it ain't the cologne. <laughs> oh, man, you bring up a good point. Yeah, man. So that's what I'm saying. This this alligator zip lining, what have you. Now, here's my here's my other thing. And, and we went on vacations. You know, like we went on a vacation as a kid once a year, right? Yeah. And, and we got on like whatever it was, wherever we were. It was a trolley tour, right? Your, your family gets on the trolley. Then you got the guy at the head of the thing driving it telling you if you look to your right you'll see a, a building from 1871 yeah. and you look closely the window and you see everybody going oh is that a window now i'm looking at this going my god i don't know if i could do that like do you Be- have the patience patience for for going on a tour like people are on a tour oh, with oh. the flag you know with the flag yeah. so you could find the tour person and there's like 30 people like stop here guys uh here's the cemetery if you look at the tomb right here and this was and then like everybody looks at the tomb and i'm thinking right. to myself how the fuck is <laughs> <man?"> like, <laughs> are yeah. you are you doing this like i mean are you doing this with the family i, I mean, did something one, that, I, go ahead i did one in uh savannah georgia yeah, and I got to be honest, I was surprised, but I actually, what happened? I can't see you. Is that no, yeah, I know it's gonna it's gonna leave soon. Go ahead. Oh, damn, I'm getting worried about that now. Yeah, I did one in Savannah, Georgia, with Jackie, where they take you all around, and I was like, this is gonna be lame, but um, and it was the trolley, and it was really relaxing to sit back, and 
I've been walking by this pink house for two days straight, and I didn't know anything about it. Now the guy tells you, so so I actually found it a little more enjoyable. Now, this wasn't a hop on, hop off. Those, that would drive me nuts. You know, you're waiting for some old lady, uh, you know, making a day out of this. But, um, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I think I'm more, are you into history like that? I like to hear it. You just said you like to hear it about the theaters you play. You like to hear who was there before you and stuff. So. I, I do. I guess I want it in like little small digestible bites. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know about like walking around following someone with a flag. My father and I did this together in Italy when we went in 2010. And, you know, we, we, it was a private. It was me and my father and a woman walking around Italy through the museums. And she's going, do you see this statue? It was, And I'm like, I told my dad, I go, we're gonna bail midway through this. Like we, it was a day tour, <laughs> right? And me right. and and my dad was like, I, I I couldn't agree with you more. I'm starving. I gotta get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, so, you you get locked in too long with those things. You locked know? in, man. Anything on a trolley where there's like you know, like I feel like I if I want to leave, I just have the ability to just walk away from the tour. That's what I'm looking for. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It, it just, I was looking at it going, I can't, I can't do this. Well, when we went to Pompeii in Italy to see the ruins of Pompeii, I'm sure you've seen those, right, at some point? Mm hmm. So we didn't want to do the tour thing, me and Jackie, and have that. So we would walk around on our own, and sometimes it would be annoying because I'd see something that looked cool, but I didn't know what the hell it was. So I'd wait for one of the tour people to swing by, and I'd just dip in the ear. No, oh, yeah. just just get what you need and then you slide <laughs> right out. And they know you're doing that. They don't like that. They don't like that. Yeah. They can see you coming over, pretending you look at that shit, but you're really listening. Oh, all right. I was fucking, okay, no, no. I didn't realize that was a kitchen. <laughs> 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 I hear you, bro. Oh, shit. So you good to so, be home? Or when you going back? What's going on now? Uh we go back out in another 15. Eh, no, I think it's 10 days, but it's it's I tell you, I took Serafina, it was just me and her today uh we got up i took her to piano lessons and uh i gotta i gotta tell you the teacher is really good in the sense that she's like no it's like this da, 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 da. and then seraphina will do it and then she screw up no it's like this da, 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 da. seraphina didn't get discouraged didn't like you know like if that was me i'd go forget it, i can't do this you know like it, it, right. it'd be like forget it i, I ain't doing this right, and seraphina right was in it you know just in it trying to get it right bro that's that's but that's because look at the age that's what's so great about kids what are you gonna do go have a cigarette and a cup of coffee you got nothing else going on in your life sit there and learn how to do it you know what i mean i know that, i know it, it, and they lock in they lock in that's I, I you showed me that video of your daughter singing that was like tight bro that was confident she was singing which she wasn't singing like Nervous. I mean, she was no. singing like she felt like this is where I belong. Level singing. Yeah. So, bro, she starts playing the piano. Yeah. And the song is "Sway." I don't know if you've ever heard it. Like, "Sway with me." Why don't you be Michael Bublé? You ever hear that? Sway oh, probably, with me. probably. Right. Yeah. I had to get up and walk outside because I started to weep yeah. in front of in front of the teacher and Serafina. <laughs> Bro, you know, I, I I and I I was thinking about this from last week because I was just gone three days, and when I first came home, it was tension with me and Jackie. Being gone as long as you were, I think this is all a product of being gone so long. You know, all of a sudden oh, yeah. you're home. And the adjustment, you got to admit, at least same with me, it seems, is more with my wife. My kid, it's like a parade when I'm home. They're psyched to see you. But with the wife, it's like, uh, I think there's a little bit of uh, not what we do or any of that. It's just that anywhere. And you've been outside of the realm of this house without these kids. And I'm jealous of that. I don't care if you were barbecuing at a garbage dump. You weren't here. <laughs> and I was. You know, you've seen some shit that I didn't see. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. So let's not have, we're not having a parade because you're home, even though the kids are loving you. So. Yeah. 
Now you're home 17 days, your daughter's belting out a tune on the piano, all the emotions oh, flooding. Oh. Guy. The teacher and must have talked to her husband afterwards and been like, oh my God, another typical <laughs> sensitive Hollywood actor. The guy walked out of the room crying halfway through his daughter playing, uh, you know, sway. <laughs> Not only that, bro. I got her. <laughs> what? What? I, I got her in the car. I buckled her in the seat, and I said, "Listen, we learned a very important lesson in there." I said, "You weren't getting it. You were not getting the song right, but you didn't get discouraged. You kept doing it, and what that is is dedication and practice." All right. Now, you know, I don't know if this is just a kid thing. Or what? But it's hard to like have the kid like focus in on you while you're talking like this. Yeah. Oh right? yeah. Right. So I'm like, and, and I'm like, and and then she's like looking away. I go, look at me, look at me. Right. If you learn anything in life, that to be good at anything, it takes hard work, dedication, and practice. Okay. That's what you just learned in there today. And then she was like, "Can I have some cheese?" I it's know. Like, it's man, like, you're giving. It's, 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 Gold, gold, bro. And you want cheese? <laughs> but I do the same thing, right? I, and I remember my father doing that with me, and me looking at my father like, "Just start the car, guy." <laughs> <laughs> now we're doing it, right? It's same thing. I go, "Say, do you hear me?" I did it today. We're playing hoops. We go to this gym, and I'm showing how to do some. And she's like, "Okay, Dad." And she, I go, "Listen." And she won't listen. I go, we're going home. We're going home. Dad, I go, then listen to me. All right? We do, you know? And then, <sighs> okay, I got it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I go, bro, but, like, my question to you, is there an age where it starts to seep in and they go, and they look at you and go, tell me more, Dad. Well, like, I think I think it's this, and this you'll see this pretty soon if you haven't already. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, something will happen. Or some, you know, I don't want to give an example, but Serafina look up at you and go, that's because of hard work and practice. And that's how, like, you'll find out it did get through. And you're like, oh, my God, this shit is getting through sometimes. Holy shit. That's when it's heavy. When they, or like you tell her a story about growing up, and then she'll go, Dad, remember when you told me you and your friend went to that thing? And you're like, Oh my God, I do remember. And you do too. I'm, boom, I'm getting in there. Getting in there. How many of your mother's stories do you remember? Right? Oh. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so but it, I, but I think you think, you think your boy will be more in tune to like, I hear your dad. Or do you think, yeah, like you think nah, it'll, nah. It'll the same thing. It's funny, bro. When I come home, it's like it's like the it's like the warden is back from vacation. You know, like like the mm. the, the inmates were having a ball. Right? Yeah, and then yeah. The, and then and then the warden came back and said, "Get in a hole." Right? So, right. No so, more eating in bed. So I, the, the toys were all over the place. Right. Uh huh. That no clean up, no nothing. I go get over, get over. And then, like, my son was like, you know, looking at me. He, 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 I go get over here, all right? So you get in there and clean the mess you made. So we got we get in there, and I don't know if this is just me. I didn't like the way he was putting the shit back. Right? There's, there's like a basket, oh, yeah, and yeah. he was throwing it in there. I go, hey, we don't, oh. we don't, we don't throw it in there. <laughs> We place it in there, right? <sighs> now, I did this whole thing, and then my, my daughter left her shoes and her jacket right by the, on, on the stairs. Yeah. Not hung up, no nothing. Yeah. I go, oh, hey, clean it up. Clean it up. Bro. <clears throat> That's it? I like my it. Na my nanny was here. Yeah. She, she looks at me. She goes, I love when you're home. Oh, that speaks volumes, man. That speaks volumes. Tightening the ship. Oh, so I said, go tell a lot of that. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's like it's like when it, when you got an audience and they start to applaud your behavior as a parent. You go, 
and you, you take a bow. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I mean, when a, when somebody goes out of their way <laughs> to make a comment that like that, they they really want to let someone know that yeah, it's we it's been mutiny on the bounty, and it's good to have you home. <laughs> <laughs> but this is my forte, bro. Like there's things there's things Lana do, does that I can't do. Of course, right? of course. The create the creativity, the the, the 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 you know, the patience with the kids when she does arts and crap. But when it comes to discipline, I'm sorry. Get the fuck out of my way. Right. And just right. let me handle it. Bro, it was like it was equivalent to um God, what's the what's the name of that movie where uh where that drill sergeant comes in? Uh God, full metal jacket, bro. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Wow. Lay down the wall. You now, did you grow up like cause this sounds like the way I grew up with my dad? It sounds like how Caruso's growing up with you. When I was around my dad, it was one of two things. Either I was afraid because I didn't do something right and he was going to yell at me. I was going to be in trouble or we're having a ball. You know, there was no middle ground. It was either I'm scared. You know, it was never casual. It was always uh, intense. Either he's mad at me or hanging. So, yeah, I agree. It's it's either full bore one way or full bore the other way. There's no gray. It's either it's either (laughs) clean the shit up or nobody's. uh, I, 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 this was a little. This was a little out of hand. This is. I, I pulled a Pete here. I said, "We clean it up. If you don't clean it up, I'm gonna take all your toys and burn them in the garage." I love but, it. I love. It. <laughs> Not even throw them out. Burn them in the garage. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> Jesus, guy. Or, or, or I'm. Holy I'm shit, <laughs> that bro. Or I'm crying in the back seat with Serafina. At, uh, you know. Cause is it, I forgot to tell you this. I did the whole speech in the thing, and she wanted cheese. I get in the front seat. We put a, uh, one of her favorite songs on. She starts singing. I'm looking at her sing in the rearview mirror, bro, bawling, bawling, right? Oh man! And she's looking, and she's looking at me. She said, like, "Daddy, what's wrong?" I go, "I'm just so proud of you." So it's e- it's either I'm burning your, I'm burning your toys. <laughs> Or I'm balling because I'm proud of you. There's no in between, man. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm either burning your toys or crying while you're singing along <laughs> with Taylor Swift on the radio. Oh god, I love it, bro. That's a that's a that's a that's a present parent, man. Being oh, uh, bringing it all to the table, man. I love oh, it. Oh man, oh man. Oh, so man. yeah. Good to be home. Uh, good, for good. those for those of you on Patreon, I gotta tell you, and we gotta reach out here. We've put some, you know, videos up. We've also put some photos up, but what we haven't put up is a podcast. All right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. and that's on us. We thought the podcast was up there, so we got to apologize, everybody who has joined the Patreon. Uh, we are in the midst of rectifying that problem. Uh, so we apologize for that not being up there. It's totally on us. Um, so, uh, it will be up there this week, but, uh, thanks again for, uh, for all, uh, all your listenership, yes. uh, Pete and I really do appreciate it. Always. Um, what, uh, what else, what else? We got? I just want to mention that I'm going to be in, uh, and I don't know what the demographic is as far as, uh, Who's listening to us in Davenport, Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, and Green Bay, Wisconsin? But I'm hitting these cities uh, in about a week and a half. So if you want your tickets to that, SebastianLive.com. At the end of April, I'll be in Las Vegas at the win. And, bro, I just saw the trailer to the movie that I did with De Niro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> All right. I gotta send it to you. Oh, please do! I'm dying to uh, see it. Uh, I couldn't believe I was watching it. It was it was surreal. It was surreal. Oh, to oh watch, my god! Oh, that's fantastic! I'm, that's yeah. fantastic. I'm gonna send that to you. But other than that, thanks again for listening to the Pete we're and Sebastian gonna, show. Good. I know we're rapping, so I just want. I thought it'd be fun. I'm gonna leave you with a little one George Washington at the end of every show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah, one, just one. Okay. 
We all know, based on what we chatted about today, with you with the sneakers and the, and the jean and the, even the sweater on last cast that had a hole in it. And you told me that the hole was pre-planned, right? So you're yeah, a guy yeah. about fashion. Washington not only was so into fashion, like, and looking good. You know how you keep your car, like, legendarily spotless? Yeah. Washington only always had white horses and... He had this technique he would teach everyone who had his horse they would do. He would take like a white paste and cake it all over his horse and then wrap like cloth around the horse overnight before he had something important where he had to go into town like for a ceremony. And then the next day, the horse would be so white, like eye-popping white. Then he would take a shoe polish and darken every hoof. And then when he was wow. a half a mile outside of town, he would stop the stagecoach, get out of the stagecoach, change into his uniform, tighten it up, hop on the white horse with the fresh black hoofs, and gallop into town. <laughs> like, he, like he just rode all the way from Boston to New York like that. And the crowd would line up and bow oh. to the king, man. Oh. <laughs> it's you and your Porsche, bro, with your leather pulling in for a meeting in L.A. There's no difference between you and Washington. It's unbelievable. More to come. <laughs> 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 Great hanging, oh, bro. Oh, bro, it's like he gave the horse like a wax job. Right, oh, even the other uh, horses were looking at the horse going, what, what the, What did you get done? <laughs> Who's doing you? Look at that. <laughs> Full of, it was a blonde. It, picture like a blonde bleaching oh. her hair, even blonde. That's what he was doing, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh beautiful, man. bro. I love the George Washington tips at the end of the cast. I listen, I, the comparisons with you just never end, man. It's really <laughs> something. <laughs> uh, oh, well, there you have it. The Pete and Sebastian Show. Thanks once again. We will see you next week. Right. Later, brother.